everyone, thanks for watching again. I'm Scott Schachter, Vision Source, Pismo Beach. And um, last time uh, I did a video here for uh, Optometry Times, I spoke about creating a dry eye center and how I thought really a dry eye center really is nothing more than creating a dry eye protocol. And that's what I'd encourage you to do. Make it part of your exam rather than <clears throat> a separate entity. So I'll, I'm just going to share with you briefly what I do currently in my practice. So what we do on patients 25 and over is my staff, uh, through pre-testing, now I should say 25 and over or anybody with dry eye complaints or contact lens wearers, um, my staff will screen with a phenol red thread test, which is a zone quick test. And we're looking for about 20 millimeters on that thread test to be normal, 10 millimeters is dry, 15 is sort of an in-between reading. So if they test 15 or less, the next thing my staff does is they'll run the inflammatory test, which is an MMP9 test. Uh, and we'll talk about that more later, but what we're looking for is inflammation in the tear film. If you have a high level of MMP9s, you have inflammation. So <clears throat> they'll run the test um, through pre-testing. They'll put a, uh, on, the, on the back of the test, they'll put uh, the patient's information, and, uh, their name and initials, and, and the time they did the test, and 10 minutes later, it's ready. So if the test comes out negative and they're dry, what you should be thinking about is punctal occlusion or artificial tears, because you have a good quality tear, there just may not be enough of it. So we can supplement that with artificial tears or punctal plugs. Um, <clears throat> if the test is positive, start thinking about restasis. That's what I do, uh, especially a weak positive. Um, they're going to respond best to the medication. You don't want to plug a patient that has inflammation. You're preserving a toxic tear. Uh, MMP9s are part of the collagenase family, in particular it's a gelatinase and it can be harmful to the cornea. So if they're positive, no matter what's going on, and I want to be clear, even if it's MGD, if we're talking about evaporative or lacrimal insufficiency, if there's inflammation, restasis or cyclosporin becomes the centerpiece of what I do for my anti-inflammatory therapy. Uh, we're also going to be looking at hot compresses and omega-3s, etc. as adjunctive treatment. But we have to address the inflammation. If you don't treat that inflammation, in all likelihood, it's going to get worse. You cannot get rid of inflammation with omega-3s or with hot compresses. You could look at doxy, uh, azocyte as being some other alternatives or steroids. Uh, but what I like to do, the safest uh, way to, to treat this is going to be with restasis, long-term anti-inflammatory therapy. Um, at the two-month follow-up, and usually I see my um, cyclosporin patients back two months later, the two-month follow-up, if they come out negative for infl inflammation but their tear volume is still sort of low, now I can put plugs in on that patient. And I do extended duration only. I think they're safer uh, than the, the type that uh, don't dissolve. I think, uh, you know, in the last three years or so I've been using them. I've had no complications. I have had granulomas occur with the permanent types of plug, in intracanalicular and punctal plug. Um, all of my all of my patients are stained with fluorescein in this group, uh, and I don't mean fluoresce, I, I mean fluorescein strips. And what I do is it's critical that you wait. You wait about two or three minutes before you look at this uh, at the staining. It's going to be a much different picture than if you look at it right away. So put the uh, fluorescein dye in uh, and do something else. Review images with the patient, refract the patient, do something, and then take a look at the slit lamp, and you can more accurately assess the tear film breakup time and corneal staining at that point. Um, key to all of this is no matter what you do, follow that patient back. Uh, if you put them on artificial tears, omega-3s, et cetera, follow them. Whatever you do, if, there's, if they're dry and you treat them, follow them. So diagnose it, treat it, follow it. That's the medical model. That's what's really going to provide a higher level of care and grow that medical side of your practice. Uh, if you get a strong positive, and on this inflammatory test, you can get varying degrees depending on how high the level of MFP9s are. If you get a real strong positive, very quickly see that pink line show up on that test. Uh, start thinking about running the show test for Sjogren's. It's thought that a lot of these uh, patients that test positive for inflammation in the tear film likely have something like Sjogren's going on. I can't say I have a lot of experience with that yet, but we're starting to test some of that, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, so that's really all I wanted to cover today. Uh, if you have any questions about that, um, let me know. I think my email will be provided here. Thanks a lot.